So as we got into this bus, this MCI that we were working on when we were changing the fluid and the differential, the gear oil, uh, there was a big hunk of tooth in there and a lot of metal shavings, um, more than normal. And that big tooth really concerned us. So uh, we needed to look into it a little bit further and see what was going on. But something was obviously showing us signs of a problem. When we got into it, and you could see that it was definitely the shape of a tooth um, uh, type thing, uh, very tight on there. When we got into it, it ended up being actually the bearing for the pinion bearing. You can see how loose the play was on that pinion bearing. Um, the, the teeth actually looked fine on everything. So the side of the pinion bearing had actually busted out uh, because the load on it was improper. And you can see how much spacing there is also between the, the bearings on there. There's not supposed to be that much spacing in there. Um, and then you can see where that had those metal, big metal pieces had broken off from. And there's like a silver paste all over everything that we touched in there because there's so much metal inside there. Um, just on everything. And then once I took this bearing apart, you can see how the race was failing because of the way the heavy load was on there. And the load was happening because this is where the pinion bearing sits. And at some point it had broken and they had re-welded it back together and it doesn't quite fit right. And then uh, we'll find some other issues later. So this was us putting the new, we got a new rear end from our friend Brandon and we're getting it to fit under the bus here. under uh, you have to go up just a hair I think okay. hope you roll it backwards we pick up the front end and <laughs> go up you're okay hang on a little lower than you let's try that Yeah, I got just a hair more. <laughs> just jack, jack it up a couple more clicks. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, hold up. It's doing something weird. Um, go up on your front strap here if you can. Uh, I wouldn't do that anymore. That thing looks like it's got a lot of stress on it. Hmm? Does that have a lot of stress on it? Yeah, that, it always has. Yeah. Well, it seemed like he was going to break the ratchet strap. If he... uh, We're pretty close to going in. It's almost it, two degrees more, maybe? Yeah. Try a little bit more on your chain thing. Okay. I think you could line it up and start pushing it in. <laughs> um, I think it just did it on its yeah. own. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, come up a little bit. <laughs> Hang on, because I gotta get this chain motor out of here, because we're never gonna get it on the studs. And I'm not, if we get it on the studs with the motor attached, I'm not gonna be able to uh, get the hook out of it. Fair enough. <laughs> so we have no at all rear support effort at this point. We have rear support. We don't have front support. Well, or there's no chain you... or anything, it's just on the jack. Yeah. Okay. Go up there, Jack Jonathan. Um, Can your chain motor hook that flange in the back? Okay, hang on, let's see what we can do here, Hunter. Okay, don't move, because I'm going to put my finger back in this hole here. Can't feel it there, so we're going to come on the back side.
Hunter, push towards me while I'm doing this. Start pushing in. Go up on the jack, Jonathan. Actually, I think I might be too high. Okay, let's try that. Let down on your jack a little bit, Jonathan. I don't think his jack's really doing anything at this point, is it? Come on now. I think he's in the way. Is his jack thing in the way? Is that no. finger in front of the... No, it's all loose. None of this is doing anything. Touching on this side. Yeah, and I'm in this stud. Okay. This stud. Well, we get it all the way in, aligned perfectly straight, and it's about an inch away from being seated all the way. We couldn't get it to go any further. We took it out, uh, realigned it again, pushed it all the way in, and same exact results, about one inch away, and it was stopping. It would not go in any further. All the holes were lined up. It was on all the studs sliding in. Uh, we were checking left, right, top, bottom measurements, making sure it was perfectly square. Uh, it just would not go in. Well, it wouldn't go in because this is hitting on this here and also on this one here. But you can see how far off it is. And when you compared the caps from the old one, it's got a tapered, a very significant tapered angle on it, which this one doesn't have. This one's almost flat. And then the, the machine surface is much larger on here compared to that one. So it's not, we thought it was the same rear end, but it is not the same rear end. There's just no way to ever get it to fit in. <laughs> That's a machine surface that's supposed to fit a really, really tight fit. And it's, it's off like a, at least an eighth, if not a quarter of an inch. And we can tell even too, by looking at the, the bolt holes there, at the washers, this, this is much further out to the outside. This one's so much beefier. The distance between the edge and the washer there compared to this one, it's like non-existent. So it's, it's just machined differently. We gotta find a different rear end. Well, after looking at these, they're actually not machined. Somebody's taken a grinder to these and really ground them way back, tapered this thing. It's actually through the holes where the washers were at. Um, e even the washer itself has been ground down to get that to fit on the old one. So it's had major modifications to it that's just never gonna work. So uh, from, just gotta start over. <laughs> so we've been using these little magnetic base uh, work lights from Olight for a while. And they just came out with these new ones that we've been using. Uh, this one's called the Swivel. Big difference, it's a little bit larger, but it swivels, it pivots on the bottom too. So not only is it tipped forward back and forth this way, but the, the bottom actually swivels on it as well. It rotates on there. Uh, it has a, a threaded mount base on there too, so you can put it on a pole or something. And then they have the Max Pro, I believe what it was called. Uh, so it's even larger. Let's see the size differences there. So this one's really, really large. But same thing, swivel base, magnetic, a little larger work light. So uh, we'll put a link to these on, from Olight. They sent us these. Um, and then uh, we get a commission if you actually order something, so I'll post a link to that. They're very bright and they're magnetic and then the fact that it swivels, that helps you if you get it in a position sometimes where the magnetic part, you can't get it pointed the way you want to. So the swivel base is really neat. Because that's been welded back together there, um, we didn't want another failure to happen on this. So we're, uh, we don't want to just put it back together so we got to get the new rear end for it. All right, because this housing has been modified on the inside, um, we don't have any ability, you know, this is a precise, machine fit on here. We don't have the ability to kind of figure out what that's supposed to be. So the easy button push here was for $1,500. He's got a whole new rear axle coming. So we're pulling this whole thing out. Um, we, we just got to finish disconnecting the radius rods that are holding it on here right now. We have all the airlines and brakes and everything disconnected and then the shocks. 
Uh, we've got the lower airbag mounts are out so that'll just drop down when we do it. So we've got to take off the four radius rods and then take off four shocks and this whole thing is just coming out. We're gonna drop it down, slide it out, and then for 1500 bucks, the new one's going in. Um, that just saves so much time and effort and energy. Uh, that includes the, the rear end. Uh, so we're gonna send this one back, this used one that we got that we're not gonna be able to use. Brandon's gonna come pick that up. He's gonna come in on vacation to Nashville, uh, visit us, and then we're gonna put that back in the crate form and, and send it back. So uh, the old one's gonna get, is just parts over here. And then $1,500, a whole completed assembly coming in and out. That's really the easiest thing to do. Um, no more messing with it. It'll be precise. Don't have to worry about failures in the future. We're just too concerned that this rear end is so messed up that that housing has been welded. The pinion was failing in it because of it. Um, if we put it back together, how long is it going to last? It's going to do it again. This bus just got upgraded from a, a 8V71 to an 8V92TA. And then we're also going to increase some horsepower to it. So uh, if the more we build up on this with horsepower, that's the more uh likelihood that something's going to fail back here on this so we can't put an already compromised rear end back in this thing because that's that's the last thing he needs is to have it fall apart when he's going down the road um so the the new used <laughs> rear end coming um should be here in a couple of days but uh we're probably going to drop this tomorrow it's all like i said just real quick four radius rods are coming off four shocks and it's, it's everything else is disconnected already uh all the airlines are off the the DD3 brake chambers are all disconnected. Um, the inversion valve is off. Everything is ready to go. We got it about as light as possible. We can pull the hubs on it, but that's not really going to help us any. And then any parts on this that are good, depending on what the new one has for brakes and stuff like that, we'll pull the parts off of it and he can have, you know, a couple of spare hubs. These bearings we know are good, so we'll check the bearings on the other one, we'll swap them over if we need to. Uh, I have new radius rod bushings. I wasn't going to replace these because they're not really that bad, but since we have to have them off already, it'd be really dumb to not put the new ones on um, while we have them off, just so it's done and never has to be done again. And then this has all new airbags that are going on it. Um, we just we didn't put the airbags back in yet because it gave us easier access to get in there to the rear end uh, through that hole right there without having the airbag. So I'm glad we didn't put them on. This one we had put on, but we had to take all the bolts off to be able to drop it. We have the old tag axle swing arm bushing is out. Uh, we're getting that prepped and ready to go. So we have the new bushing to put in. The bushing's been in the freezer for a couple days. Uh, so since we get a little bit of free time, we're gonna get that bushing slid in and the swing arm can go back on. But again, right now with it out of our way, it makes things a lot easier for us to be swapping out this rear end too. So there's the giant bushing in the freezer, <laughs> along with some bearings, braces. All right, well, this MCI is definitely proving to be a challenge, but uh, it'll be another few days before we probably get back to another video on it. From a mile away, you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease. But at the top of that mountain, there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run. They can make it to the top, Scott will put them in the shop till their new life has begun. Buses come to run Bus Grease Mountain We're gonna get that big job done 